Scientists will not stop with their bizarre creations. Tiny brains with eyes? Rat arms grown in labs? What's next? Making ears out of fruit? What if we turned fruit into human ears? Because why not, right? Andrew Pelling, a Canadian researcher, decided it would be fun to turn apple slices into ears and wants to one day create a human spinal cord out of asparagus. Fruits have a specific protein called cellulose, which is what gives them their very tough exterior. And since it's much cheaper to use the cellulose exterior of an apple to make a mold rather than 3D printing one, of course they're gonna go and choose that. They removed all of the apple's cells aside from the cellulose, which up close it kinda looks like a wasp's nest, and then added in mammal cells into this fruit mold to let it sit there for 12 weeks. And it became an ear. Honestly, this is a great step into finding new ways other than using animals to create human parts for transplants. However, before we all start walking around with fruit heads, Pelling and his team need to find a way where our immune system isn't going to reject the cells and cause the fruit part to decay over time. I think it's also crazy though that this mad scientist is encouraging people to try this at home. Mayhaps. Scientists created tiny brains that have their own pair of mini eyes. Researchers just love to dabble in growing whatever they can, legally that is, and one of these practices are called organoids, which are tinier versions of organs that scientists can study and observe instead of real ones. I guess. <laughs> this isn't the first organoid that they've made either. They've made miniature beating hearts and even tear ducts that are able to cry. This next step is crazy though, because these tiny brains are able to produce their own brain waves that are seen in preterm embryos and obviously made their own eye sockets. Now, they're not fully eyeballs yet, but rather they are the step that's made before retinas get created. So, close enough really. Again, it's all for science because this would be able to help researchers observe certain disorders revolving around the eyes and brain, especially while they're in the embryo stages. Out of the 314 that they created of these mini brains, 72% were able to create their own so-called eyes. They also seem to respond to light, and some went as far as forming a lens and corneal tissue. Maybe just stop the experiment there though, please. The cutest cloned dogs were created in South Korea. These are highly trained clone dogs though, and were not just created for smooches and pats. They were created to help sniff out illegal substances. A dog by the name of Chase was an incredibly talented Labrador retriever up until his retirement in 2007. Because he was so great at his job, scientists in Korea decided to clone his genetics into other dogs in hopes that they would create the same outcome. And they did just that. These genetically enhanced pups outclassed natural born sniffers across the country. They developed this idea because despite some dogs being bred for tracking down substances, not all of them are able to do the job properly. And they're quite expensive, with each dog costing about $40,000 each. In comparison to the clone dogs though, they go for around $100,000 each. But it's worth it because they get the job done. The scientists are still trying to stay humble about it though, saying that despite them all being genetically identical, each one has their own special performance. While one might be created to sniff out illegal substances, one was genetically created to help sniff out harmful diseases in a person. Maybe we'll one day see these good boys and gals in our airports. Bacteria that can eat plastic. Let's hope so, because according to live science, around 14 million tons of plastic is floating around in our oceans every year. And it takes no rocket scientist to know that it's doing irreparable damage to our ocean's ecosystem and marine life. Not only that though, the seafood that we ingest might have come across plastics and ingested them, which brings up the issue of us also ingesting it. By chance though, scientists were collecting plastic bottles from a facility when they noticed something very interesting. There was some sort of bacteria eating away at the plastic. It's not just any type of plastic though. 
It's polyethylene terephthalate, which is used in our bottles, containers, and even clothing fibers. They had to research these things and discovered that they have two digestive enzymes that break down the PET when coming into contact with it. Scientists, being scientists, wanted to manipulate this breakdown into making it six times faster, basically re-engineering the bacteria and creating some sort of enzyme cocktail. But you really want to know how far they will take it. They want to use this experiment to also turn plastic into vanilla, since there is such a high demand for it in the world. How they're going to do this, I don't really know, and there's too many big words for me to understand. Growing more than just organs in a lab, but entire body parts as well. This was done with mice DNA at Massachusetts General Hospital, and they actually managed to create a body part with functional veins and muscle tissue. Harold Ott, who works in the specific MGH department, stated, The composite nature of our parts makes building a functional biological replacement particularly challenging. Parts contain muscles, bones, cartilage, blood vessels, tendons, ligaments, and nerves each of which has to be rebuilt and requires a specific supporting structure called the matrix. It isn't the first time that science has created muscle and veins, and in fact, they even got to the point where they successfully transferred veins into a human patient, made entirely of his own stem cells. This was so that his body doesn't end up rejecting the addition and dismisses the need for immunosuppressant aids. Sure, they can do this, but when it comes to rebuilding an entire body part, it's a lot more complicated. This is where I get lost. They basically put all these ingredients into a bioreactor mixing pot, let the gross thing sit for a couple of weeks, and voila, they had a rat arm. Spider goats. Yes, goats that had their milk modified to be able to produce a silk gene that's found in spiders. Do you remember them? As a reminder, that new scientific creation was started in the University of Wyoming, where researchers there developed a way to insert the silk spinning genes from spiders into goats' DNA. The idea started when they originally wanted to use the spider silk straight from the source. This quote comes from the online website physics.org claiming, due to its strength and elasticity, Spider silk fiber could have several medical uses, such as for making artificial ligaments and tendons, for eye sutures, and for jaw repair. The silk could also have applications in bulletproof vests and improved car airbags. But where are they now? Well, Things went a little silent after that experiment was put to the test. In fact, the company in Montreal, Nexia Biotechnologies, apparently went under and they had to sell their genetically modified spider goats. Sugar and Spice were their name, and having sold them to a museum, that eventually took them off because of public pressure. No one really knows where these goats ended up. A bit of a tragic ending to our spider goats, but hopefully they're doing okay out there. Cloned puppies that glow the color red. That is indeed a sentence. Scientists in South Korea have genetically modified beagle puppies for the whole purpose of trying to find a way of treating harmful diseases in humans. They're not clones of each other, but rather it's the fluorescent genes inside of them. It was first transferred into a beagle skin cell, and then was placed into embryos before being inserted into a surrogate mother. Six puppies resulted from this. Sadly, two of them didn't make it, but the four remaining puppies, which are all named Rupee, <laughs> seem to be doing just fine. Like many other glowing animals that have been done over the years, it's all for the sake of hopefully creating a future where we'd be able to transfer specific genes into humans to help cure specific disorders and diseases. For right now though, all we got is glowing animals, which I'm not too upset with. When will enough be enough? Are you a fan of hybrids? Let me know down below and I will see you all in the next video.